Uh, so hi everyone, uh, my name is Jagur, uh, and uh, I'm going to present today um, Palace WordPress uh, with React. Uh, first of all, feel free to um, interrupt me at any time. If you don't understand something I say, uh, yeah, feel free, just raise your hand, throw something here. Uh, uh, it's fine. So, so first of all, about me boring section that each presentation has. So that's me. That's uh, that cute uh, kid with some uh, with a lollipop addiction. Um, I have some experience with uh, WordPress. I'm not a uh, React specialist. I, I've done like, one or two projects with it. I think it's really cool. It's really promising. Um, a lot of possibilities. Uh, and using both really, like it's, it's something that I feel it's not being explored as it should by the WordPress community. And there's a lot of potential there too. I'm a freelancer and um, in this presentation there'll be some code available and uh, it, it's in my GitHub repo. And I'll, I'll post it all on my Twitter, um, everywhere I can put it. It's all public, so feel free to, uh, if you have any questions, you can also send me an email, write me on Twitter or something like that. It's fine. So the agenda for this talk is, uh, so first of all, I'm going to try to explain what is, uh, what's headless uh, WordPress, um, if you guys are not usually familiar with this term. And then uh, the advantages of this architecture of using uh, headless WordPress and, and React. Then the architecture itself, um, one of the possible ones, there are many ways of doing the same thing I'm going to do in this presentation. This is just one of the approaches, not the best one, it's just one of them. Um, I'm going to show you guys a sample application, very simple, uh, quick and dirty uh, code, um, but it's going to show uh, important concepts. I think that's the important part. And uh, the last part of the presentation is, is when things get a little bit crazy. It's uh, going to show it's possible to do WordPress without WordPress, and uh, and what are the possibilities in what uh, using using uh, the specific architecture of headless WordPress and React. So first of all, uh, what is uh, headless WordPress? So if you analyze the classic model of WordPress, that's how we do it, that's how both most uh, WordPress uh, instances are, are used. So we, we have, where's my pointer here? We have uh, third party systems like Akismet uh, talking to WordPress, to our, that's our WordPress box. We have an admin uh, or a content person constantly uh, injecting uh, content in the WordPress box. We have our template system responsible for presenting the content to, to these users. And the users interact, they do the request, they get back their nice uh, HTML from, from the WordPress box here. Um, the systems can be like, I don't know, weather information. WordPress can consume a lot of this too. So when you use this box here, you get a lot of nice stuff for free, which is uh, all these blocks here, really, uh, which makes WordPress not only uh, something to blog, but uh, a CMS, like a complete uh, CMS in that sense that, it, that you can build anything upon it, like uh, on it. Um, so you have all these blocks that we love, some of these blocks more than others. Um, and if I had to pick two of these blocks, that I had uh, hardest time with. Not saying that they're bad implemented or anything like that. But if I had to pick two of them <coughs> that uh, gave me a hard time um, and it was hard to give me some sort of limitation, um, I won't tell it now. I want to see a show of hands. Uh, for at, so if you guys had to pick two, think about it. And would you pick admin interface? No, OK. The cron? No. DB abstraction? I have a hard time with those queries sometimes, but okay. 
Future actions, this one everyone loves. Like, I don't believe anyone would have a problem with that. The template system. There it is. Yes, yes. Me too. So that's our first one. Uh, the fact that you can create, uh, cred, create, retrieve, update, delete. Yeah, that part of WordPress. It's fine too. I don't have, but anyone with that part? No, cool. Caching? Two, three. Um, internet. I. T <laughs> Thank you. It's hard to, to, to say it for me, but uh, not to deal with it. Like, it's, it's position simple for me, but for anyone here? Problem with that? No, cool. HTTP abstraction. I, I never had to use it that much, but it's there. Cool. Multi-site. Nope. REST API. Okay. And routing. I'm on that one. That's my second one. And I think that uh, using uh, a headless WordPress with React, you're kind of removing these blocks from, from your build and uh, using something that uh, you're more familiar with or it's something more kind of modern. Um, so that's kind of the idea of this talk. So that's the classic model again. And um, so what we're going to do here, we're going to remove the template system. It spins and goes up, yes. <laughs> and then we're going to replace it with the REST API. That's our first step. And then, ooh, React falls from the sky. So now we have React in the middle of these interactions of uh, the clients and the site. Um, and our React site will be consuming the REST API. For the people that are not really used to the REST API, uh, it's cool. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do with it. And it's been um, enabled and default on all WordPress since version, I think, 4.6. Is it 4.6? I'll, I'll have this information later. But anyway, it's there for you. Uh, it's easy to use. Um, it's not that complicated. And um, another thing is that this architecture here, that uh, using a headless WordPress, is not something really new. And the React part is not really necessary here. It could be vanilla JS. It could be uh, Angular. It could be Vue. It, it, it can be anything. You can have any sort of HTML and JavaScript being this layer here and consuming the REST API. So all the information you can find in the admin, usually the, the REST API is going, going to be there with all the information. So, uh, and if it's not there, you can also create your own uh, REST endpoints. Okay, the advantage of this architecture here, let's go through the list of it. I think the first one is the uh, separation of concerns. Uh, by using this guy here, you're kind of making sure that uh, the view logic only goes here. And why this is important, I think when we work on uh, large WordPress uh, projects, there is usually this confusion of uh, code that shouldn't be in the in the template part that is very like business logic shouldn't leave there should live somewhere else either in the plugin or either in the class or something like that something more elegant than that you want to it's a good practice to not leave heavy logic in the in the view layer in this guy here so by using this by using this architecture you're kind of forcing your your team your, or yourself that's the biggest threat of uh, writing core business logic in the view part. So, and at the same time, making sure that your REST API is only exposing important data to, the, to this layer here, to the view layer, the React layer. Um, another advantage of using this architecture here is that now that you separate it into parts, your WordPress, your, your CMS, um, 
you can easily replace either this part here, your view layer, or you can replace WordPress. Not that we want to do it, we all love WordPress, and we're going to use forever, but uh, it will allow you to do it more easily if you follow this, uh, this architecture. So, and this, is one, this one is major too, uh, is that uh, by using React or any other these modern frameworks, it's really easy to reuse um, the visual components and, uh, and make them dynamic. It's really easy to do this because you're, you're close to it. You're close to JavaScript, you're close to HTML. So, uh, and it's very easy. These, com these, uh, these frameworks are made for that. Um, and you have best of both worlds. So you have an awesome CMS, the best one, and you have a cool new technology, uh, and uh, you can play both. Speed, so that's major too. Uh, if you do it right, it's not, it's not the silver bullet, uh, but by using React, you're not, you're kind of removing a lot of the, a lot of the code that would slow you down here. So, usually, it's not, it's not true all the time, but uh, it can happen. Especially, and that's my next point, using this architecture, you can move all this to a static website using React. Too. And that's that's the end of the presentation. I'm going to show how, uh, and that's the WordPress without WordPress. Uh, you can make your WordPress uh, site now local, and just expose your build, the build of your site, or only the static files of your site. And the other one is this is really crazy. It's like you can have uh, you can use React uh, React Native, which is uh, you can build native um, apps using React and WordPress uh, for mobile. Yeah, sure. But because you're presenting this, uh, this architecture, uh, I don't know. Is there any kind of ecosystem for doing this, doing this particular way? No. Right no. No. Is this just your idea you came up with? No, there, there are other articles. Well, that's, that's why I say it's not being really uh, explored, uh, I think. Um, I didn't see any solution like a a package that comes with all. That's that's what we're asking for, right? Yeah. An easy way to it's been done by before and it's something I could install right now. Exactly. Yeah. You can use my code. My code is on GitHub. Uh, you can use it as a starter or whatever. You you raise your hand before? Good. Okay. Sorry. Well I just I, I I Google it and find it, but there were a couple different kind of large examples that sure. I had stumbled upon. Like it was either the Boston Globe or the Washington using WordPress as a back end okay. because their uh, were used to that interface, but the data they were trying to surface in sort of an infographic kind of way uh, didn't attend to sort of a WordPress template system. So like there there are some examples out in the wild. I think even before the REST API was built into WordPress when it was still a plugin, yeah. um, that that you could find. Used on some pretty major websites. I'll, I'll see cool. if I can track it down. Send me. I, I can post on my Twitter and then, yeah. But uh, yeah, the idea is not new, uh, but um, you don't see in a lot of places. So, um, okay. So first one is how to uh, make WordPress headless. It doesn't take much. It doesn't need a plugin. You just need to uh, have your theme, and that's how your theme will look like. So your style CSS will look like this. Completely empty, you don't need any CSS in that layer. And you need, unfortunately, you need this index.php file to be empty. That's it. Otherwise, it will throw in like some sort of warning or something like that. But this itself, and maybe the 404.php as well. But that's it. That's how you need. OK. So I'm going to show uh, how it looks uh, headless. WordPress, it looks like this. It's empty. It's api.headless.localhost. It's running on my local right now. 
but the admin is there. You have the same experience and everything that I enter here will be available in the REST API. So, oops, right here. So if I hit my, uh, the red, that's for posts, yes. So if I hit the slash posts uh, endpoint, I'm going to get all this information about my post. And even any JavaScript, I can consume this and present to uh, the user. Yeah. Oh, by the way, the version is uh, since the REST API has been available since version 4.7, and we are uh, in version 4.96 right now. So it's been it's been active and part of WordPress core, uh, core for quite a like two three years maybe. All right, and now to the application. Uh, we are. I'm going to walk you guys through. Um, where am I? It's very simple uh, and has no CSS in it. So I'm sorry if there's any front-end people or designers here. Uh, so if I, if you go to post.headless.localhost, uh, you're going to see this. This is like the my home. Uh, if you go to home. You go here, if you go to blog, nothing happens. Okay, there it is. Sorry. Let's do it again. We go to home, and then you go to, to blog. Cool. Um, remember the three posts you saw there? They're right here, by the way. They're being listed from, uh, from the REST API. It's, it's consuming the REST API. And if I click on any of these posts, it's going to show uh, the post content. That's it. And this is all HTML and uh, JavaScript. It's not doing any trip to the. I mean, it is in the sense that it's getting the the REST API data, but it's all React, and it's it's fast. It feels fast, right? Uh, boop, boop, boop. So back to the presentation. There it is. That's the, the way I built it. There are other ways to do it. Uh, by the way, one thing that I forgot to mention is that uh, you can also use React inside your WordPress box in the same domain. I'm not doing this in this particular case. Uh, it gets tricky in this case too. Uh, and I hope I can, I can show you guys why. Um, but this way is a more detached way and you can use one domain just to hold your uh, your admin and your data, and another one to uh, to be your oops sorry to uh, for your front end. Remember the the sample application I just showed you guys. Uh, I use Create React app for it, which is a very nice solution. Uh, I'm, as I said before, I'm not a React specialist. Um, but with this tool here, uh, you can easily uh, create your React projects. It's, it's very good for learning. Even for production, you, you can migrate from this uh, more learning approach to, to production. There are ways to do it using this tool. Um, it, it's great. I recommend you guys have a look at it uh, if you didn't. But cool. That's how the code looks now. Uh, remember you said you saw this guy here? Uh, let me get Tina here. All right. So these are the React components we have. We have an app component kind of driving everything. We have our home component, our blog component, and a post component. Oops, going back. It's too small, right? Uh, anyway. Basically, uh, the React component has some code to fetch uh, the information from the REST API, and that's this chunk of code here. And uh, he also does the, the presentation, the markup part, which is this part here. 
and the routing, which is kind of confusing, but you get used to it. Um, so the WordPress, uh, the REST API URL is here, the one gra that grabs all the all the posts, and it just goes through all of the posts possible. So it just goes through them again. It, it, it paginates them. You cannot hit a REST endpoint and just get all the posts at once. There is a kind of a limit to it. So you have to get, to get I think, 100 posts at a time or something like that. Um, so that's what I'm doing here. It's, it's simple logic. Uh, I'm using this, uh, this JavaScript uh, framework called Axios to retrieve it, but you could use vanilla JavaScript for that. It's not, it is not that complicated. Um, and that's it. Oh, one more thing. When you retrieve code, when you retrieve HTML through uh, these methods here, you cannot just um, display them using React because React, React will escape it. Uh, will try to escape your uh, your HTML tags. And in WordPress, you can you can write your posts using uh, markup. So one of the things you're going to see here, and that's my uh, post component, is that I had to add this. Um, that's React default. Dangerously, dangerously set element uh, in our HTML. Because this information is coming from your server and it has HTML markup in it. And uh, it's a risk to just allow your, your React uh, display HTML. So by, by coding this, you're saying you're, you're assuming the risk of, of rendering uh, extraneous uh, HTML. So that's, that's the only way to do it, by the way. If you just use this information, this post uh, body here is going to escape your HTML markup, and it's going to show actually show your, your HTML instead of just bolding your text, for example. Okay, so to the next sample application. We just, we're just consuming data. Was anyone raising hands? Question? No, cool. Um, we we're just retrieving um, data from WordPress. Um, we're not, and if you, if you if you check any website, you're go, you can do use the REST API even if you're not logged in. Um, you can retrieve posts, for example. But for some data, you have to be logged in in order to make the REST calls. There are some default endpoints that uh, if you try to hit, like this one, which retrieves the settings of your website, and this is, this is kind of uh, sensitive information. You don't want people to go to your website and see that. So we're, they, they made it, uh, you have to be authorized uh, to make this REST call here. And how can you do it using React? So we have to be logged in, but at the same time, we are in a different domain, and that's when things get a little bit uh, hard. If you're just consuming, it's fine. There's not uh, much difficulty. But uh, whenever you, you will have to uh, make this authorized calls, that's when uh, things start to get a little bit crazier. So um, default WordPress way, you using your cookie and announce, uh, which is a special string, I think, or a number, that, that is in your HTML code and make sure that uh, all your requests to WordPress are, being, uh, are coming from the right place, um, the proper place. And this has been used by plugins and themes. Uh, that's how it is for, uh, if you're under the same domain, uh, under the same WordPress instance. But in this case, we're doing requests that are coming through another domain, it's not even in the same WordPress box. Um, so how can we do it? And then there are a bunch, so there are these possibilities. Uh, one of them is OAuth. This one I think is one of the hardest ones. I never really, it's awful, yes. Uh, but I think it's probably the most powerful too, I, I, I feel like. I don't know. There, so there is a plugin, so these are all plugins. These are for uh, that um, um, 
plugin store. Um, and the one I use for this one, I think one of the most uh, elegant and kind of easier to start using is this one here. You can also use basic authentication. I think there is a plugin for that too uh, that allows your application to make authorized calls to another WordPress box in another domain. Uh, basic authentication will allow it to do it, but uh, JSON Web Tokens uh, JWT felt like more modern and more uh, secure uh, than using basic authentication. These two are kind of safe, uh, easier to use. So uh, I just use this guy here. There is a plugin uh, for WordPress that will help you make uh, authorized REST API calls from other domains. So how it works um, is that, for example, we have this guy here, that's our React under, for example, posts, um, where's Tina? We have this guy here, post.headless.localhost, making calls, oops, go back, to the WordPress box. So first thing, we'll try to get a token from it. And this guy here has a plugin installed and active and everything, it's working fine here. First thing, it's that this guy will request a token from WordPress with a, the username and the password of a valid uh, WordPress user. Then WordPress is going to answer with a token, which is a string, very uh, long one. Uh, and it's going to give back to the user slash uh, React. So the user is going to store it. It can be either in a cookie or using the local uh, storage uh, API. It's going to store this token here. And all the calls that this user has to be uh, authorized, uh, authenticated, sorry, uh, this user will have to also include this in the, in the header of the calls. Which is, a, which is a header that looks like this. So that's the key, and the value is like this. Remember this guy here? That's a token. So for every call after this, the user has to send this token to the server, and the server slash the plugin will see if this token is valid or not, and give the information back, if, if the user is authorized or not. No, it's all, so Re React is only in the client in, in this case. Okay. Yeah, I'm not rendering anything on server side from React. Okay. Yeah, so this is just pure HTML JS running on the client. And how long is that there? How long is that there? To, I don't know. I think you can configure all this in the plugin. The plugin is very, uh, it's very complete. This is basically a simplified version of all Yes, yes. You're always sending this token. I think there, there are ways of even cycling these tokens to, to make sure they're always... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, but not in this case. In this case, is the client that has to hold the, the token. Exactly. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, so, okay. So now to the login application. I'm going to show you how it looks like. I have to run a little bit. Yeah. Sorry, guys. So now we add it. It's in a different domain again. And we added the possibility of uh, entering uh, your username and password and having some very, very basic admin here in this blog. So my user and password, admin, admin. And then I'm logged in. And oops. I have to run the boot of this, just a second. Mm 
building, building, building. Building it again. Cool. Done. Um, so that's that's what it is. Okay, let's do it again. User. My password. I'm not logged in, and uh, I can log out if I want. And it shows the title of my website, and I can change it from here. I'm going to change to blah, headless blah. Makes sense. Title updated, and if I go to my uh, to the back end, I'm going to see this uh, the setting will be changed there. There it is. I just changed from another domain the 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 title of my uh, of my website. Cool. Um, any any piece of code here? So the the, the code here is kind of quite simple. Uh, what I showed before is just sending the token, getting setting the token on the cookie uh, when you log in. Uh, and when you want to retrieve your settings, you get that token and you include in the headers of your call uh, and you set in the state of your of your re react component um, let's see if i'm missing anything here okay okay the next uh step is uh wordpress without wordpress so if we're using this idea of uh you know just consuming uh, data from a REST endpoint. And it, it, it goes by, by case. Uh, it's not the, the scenario won't apply to all possible sites on Earth. But uh, you can make your WordPress site static as well by using this. And that's when this cool tool called React Static comes in. Uh, and that's not the only tool that will do it, by the way. I think it's one of the easiest ones, again. Uh, there's another one called Gatsby, and there's another one called Next.js that will kind of do the same thing of uh, getting all this information and making them available uh, as static websites. So you don't have to hit the server ever again. It's like you just have to, have to hit the server to get uh, HTML and JS. That's it. And JSON. No dynamic language is necessary. Um, Cool. So the only difference, I'm just going to redo the first example, which is the simple blog, but now without WordPress. So um, I'm going to show how it looks like. So this file comes with the uh, React uh, with the tool in the image. But the only thing I had to do was to configure the, the, the endpoints. So the same thing here, pretty fast. Uh, and what I'm going to do to kind of prove that this can run without WordPress, I'm going to break my WordPress. Let's see if I can find it here. this and do it like this Just try to do it. it's broken it's broken but still running still there um Cool. The only thing that I had to add on the, on the puzzle was this guy here, which kind of retrieves when you're building the site, your static site, you have to provide what information has to be available for your React components. And you're do just doing the same thing. You're just hitting the REST API, and this time you're storing these things in JSON. 
Um, and that's how the components, that's React, this part. This part is kind of framework specific. Anyway, uh, kind of running out. Um, stuff you can do with these ideas, I think. Uh, it's very basic. There's a lot to, uh, that you guys can do with it. Um, one of the things that you can do to fully extend this idea is to extend the REST API. You can create your own endpoints. It's not that hard. And you can create a lot of cool stuff with it. Um, play with user permissions, making sure that uh, only the right users will get the right uh, data. Um, custom posts, custom fields, custom taxonomies, ACFs, CMB2, whatever you want to use to extend uh, the data in your WordPress, go for it. Automate your build process for uh, static sites. You can make something that uh, whenever you create a new post, will do will rebuild your static site, for example, um, automatically. So you don't need to and push to your server. Um, and these are all the possibilities you have. It. Like there, there are so many. I purposely like didn't fit them all here. Um, and I think that's. So, thank you. And uh, if you guys have any questions, thank you. So, what does this do to the standard WordPress plugin architecture? So, you know, a user goes, oh, I, I want to add social media feeds, and I'm just going to install this plugin. Yeah. What happens then? <laughs> now you can just use JavaScript for a lot of stuff. Sorry, I'm repeating your question. What does it do with the WordPress plugin um, ecosystem? Yeah. In, in what way it can impact it? I think a lot of stuff that used to be uh, WordPress plugins before, they can be done in JS now. But, so, so you would, but that, I'm saying that it requires a developer. Absolutely, do absolutely, yeah. yes, yes, yeah. So yes. So it's not like the user can just go, oh, I need, I need the social share plugin. I'm just going to install it. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, and that's, yeah. And that's not the same thing. Like, there are a lot of React components as well, yeah. but they're not as easy to install as a WordPress plugin, yeah. right? Not easy to uh, integrate with in your project and stuff like that. Uh, the issue is usually going to be fine with something like a, a slider or something like that, which is jabs from the start. But when it comes to something like forms, then it mm -hmm. starts to get much more difficult. Because Absolutely. Tend to be service. Yeah. Um, yeah. There is there is a a curve there. It's not it's not for this idea. This architecture is not for the for the user user like. Yeah. Away, yeah. You're taking away, in some ways, what absolutely you, yes. WordPress such a really good platform. Is it something that you can just shop for stuff? It's like there. Yeah, I'm buying it. Like it right? Absolutely yes. Um, I know there there are a bunch of disadvantages. I forgot to mention them. Uh, this is more complex. You have to instead of maintain one code base, you have to maintain two code bases now. Uh, it's a trade-off. It's not going to solve all the problems in the world, but. Uh, Oftentimes, I had to kind of think about this architecture. That would be so much nicer to build this way. And I have to stick with the template system. Uh, but it, it's something to think about. It's not going to, uh, WordPress is never shifting this way completely. It's just something well, to know about. With, Maybe, I, actually, yeah. With, with, with 5 coming out and, and the block module moving to GraphQL, it's mm. going to make consuming this sort of stuff easier. True. Because you don't have to Oh, cool. They're, they're getting, they're getting right. there yeah. to, to ease the integration. Yeah, like with advanced custom fields. Right. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You said uh, it's all available on your GitHub repo? Yes. Is that uh, If you go to my Twitter, uh, you can find my GitHub account there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, if it's available, if the code is available, everything will be available. Make sure everything is available. Uh, the code, the presentation, that's it. That's all it needs to be available. Okay. Any other question? Uh, do you have to use subdomains with that? Like, does a specific subdomain? No. The, the question is if I need to use different subdomains for this. Uh, not necessarily. You can have this similar kind of architecture under the same domain. 
It gets a little bit trickier. Um, you kind of need an, an, a folder in your WordPress, uh, root, for example. It's a little bit tricky um, because you have to host your HTML, your React files, somewhere that is not your template uh, realm, you know, because this gets routed in a, in a weird way. You can do it to, you can actually use React using the template system at the same time. You can do it, but you're still kind of constrained by the, the template uh, logic there. I did. So uh, the question is, if I can explain how um, React Static worked. Uh, I had to run a command to, uh, according to the lot, to the to this guy here, it would retrieve my objects. This command, the build command, would get all this information and store them in, in the form of JSON files, for example. So, and they all went to my local storage, and I just served this part, and that killed WordPress completely. Uh, so to make sure that uh, only the, the only thing I think you guys didn't really notice, the images are still being served by WordPress. But there are ways around it. You can like really, really improve this part here, and making sure he, uh, like the necessary stuff is, avail is available offline. This part, you can improve a lot. This is really, really, really a simple version of, uh, of what, what, can, what can be done. What are some other JavaScript frameworks that can use instead of React? Angular. Um, Vue. Vanilla JS. jQuery. Palmer? Oh, the question was what, what other frameworks uh, can be used instead of React? Anything JavaScript. Anything that has JavaScript and kind of facilitates building your uh, building uh, this dynamic and modular interfaces. I like React because it's cool. All the cool kids are doing it. Uh, but it so could be. Of getting on Facebook. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Exactly. Um, there was and, a presentation actually two WordCamps ago by uh, I think it was Bentley Hope, and he was showing how he was using the REST API to feed content to uh, JavaScript library called uh, Reveal.js, and it was like a really nice responsive. It's, it, what's what, it's what powers slides.com, which is this sort of commercial thing. But he was then using WordPress to put in, you know, here's the head title of my slide, content of my slide, forcing it into this beautiful JavaScript library that made really nice, responsive slideshows. And that was kind of cool. Another reason to use React for me was that by using React, the, the effort to make a static site was really it was a small effort. Because already I created my first, uh, the login one, which was uh, based on Create React App. And from that code, from a lot of the logic that was there, I moved that, this, like some of the components there to, uh, to static React. And uh, it was easy. Uh, it was all static in the end. So I don't know if Angular will have similar tools um, like this one. But, uh, and also the, how easy it is to move this to mobile because of uh, React Native. So you can, the, the possibilities are endless uh, with React. I, with other frameworks too, but like for at least these ones I can see uh, clearly with React too. In terms of the build process, does it rebuild everything and then push it into the yes, server? Yes, yes. So, so like that's one of the... Like number of blocks, it'll just basically reload everything. The question is if, uh, if in the build process of the static site, if it has to rebuild everything. And the answer is yes, unfortunately. But because this is just JavaScript, right? You can make it in a way that you can do it instead of doing from scratch. You just improve, like you just do incremental. Yes, uh, you can do whatever you want here. But if if your site is small enough, and you don't like don't bother just reveal everything. Uh, but you can save a lot of time, a lot of builds time, by doing uh, incrementally. More questions? No? Cool. Thanks, guys. Thank